Hello there, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today's video is going to be something I've never done before, at least I don't think I have. It's a top 10 video. Now, I've usually shied away from these because I don't like necessarily saying this is what I think the top 10 whatever is. Because it's very much uh, subjective rather than objective. So I thought, how can we bring a little bit of diversity in this? So I'm a, an old Scotsman. What's the opposite of that? A young Australian. Hello aquarium adventurers, I am Lazarus from Lazarus the Fish Boy. Welcome, my name is Lazarus Lewis, I'm a 12 year old um, fish enthusiast. I love fish so much. I have five setups and a pond and I'm just in love with them. I have so many types, so without further ado, I'll bring it back to Graham. So we're going to do a bit of a top 10 list for you as a way to introduce Lazarus. Definitely go and check out his channel, uh, the enthusiasm there it definitely needs to be rewarded. He needs to get a lot more subscribers in there. So what we're going to have a look at is the top 10 beginner fish. So for people who are new to the hobby, just starting out, you really want to invite them in with something that's a little bit more forgiving, a little easy going. So when I think of beginner fish, I guess we're really thinking about things that are going to be a little bit more tolerant. They're going to tolerate some a wider variety of parameters. They're going to be happier when it's not quite bang on stable all the time. Um, a fish that's really going to get somebody into the hobby. You don't want something that's going to hide all the time, that kind of thing. You want something that's a bit interesting, a bit cool. Um, something to get enthused about. So we'll hand over to Lazarus, we'll do one each. Um, I've already had a look at some of his, I know that he's already picked off some of the ones I was going to choose, so I've had to widen my search a little bit. But let's dive in. Okay, so my first favourite, and I'm not doing in any specific order, would have to be the Corydoras catfish. They are adorable little catfish that I really love. They only grow to about four to five centimetres, depending on which types you get. You, if you want to get a small species, you can get the pygmy corys. They get to about three to four centimetres, even smaller. But I currently am keeping the bronze Corydoras. They are gorgeous, and that's really the only Corydoras I've kept before. But probably in the future, I will keep more. But yeah, it's great to start out with and they just have lots of great personality. I honestly love these fish and I've had them for a while and they're just great drawing to the aquarium hobby. They will look at you, they'll kind of play with you a bit with their little whiskers, it's so cute but okay I, I won't try to get too silly but yeah they're gorgeous gorgeous fish. If you're looking for a nice um, busy catfish to go on the bottom of the aquarium they you can get them and just make sure because they are schooling fish you want to have them in a school of at least for um the bigger the more the better they'll be much more happier some people say you can have them alone but they don't really like that they may seem happy to you but they will be a lot happier with some friends and i recommend a minimum tank size for these fish of 20 gallons since they love lots of room to swim around and have fun and of course you're going to need to get at least four to six so you're definitely going to need plenty of room and they are definitely a great beginner starting fish so the first one i'm going to choose it's the rummy nose tetra now this is something that i have kept uh, for a long time i have I'm not keeping any at the moment but i kept them with my discus uh, the reason I've picked these ones is because I, I think they're a really great shoaling fish and they're one of the best fish I've ever kept for in terms of shoaling and you can see that movement throughout the tank so if you've got a big enough tank the Romano Tetra is definitely one to go for. They've got that bright red nose up front, they've got the colourful tail with the, the really intricate markings on there so there's something to look at when you're close up and when you're a bit further away and you see that shoaling movement. Really great fish. Did I just say fresh? Fish. So my next favourite, it's kind of like two different types of fish, but they're both related. It's the Endler Guppies and the Platties. I started with these two fish and they were the best. Um, what The reason why I'm specifically choosing Endler Guppies is because they're a more wild version of guppies and they are much more colourful and you can, you'll you see them at most uh, local fish stores. But yeah, they are a lot more colourful than the normal guppies. Well, if depending on what type of coloration you want. Although Endler Guppies are a wild strain and they have very much they got much more stable genetics on them. So if you do want to get a fish that's solid and will and is really hard to kill, then endless guppies are a great choice as they're also they also bring also of joy into the aquarium hobby and they're live bearers so they give birth to live. Super easy to breed. Males will have a stick-like anal fin called a gonopodium and the females will have a triangular anal fin as that applies with all live bearers. And the other live bearer that I love is the platies. A lot of different color varieties out there that you will love. You can think about any any type of um, platy and they're gorgeous. So I definitely recommend those two. So they are another solid, easy to keep fish and definitely something to start out 
a, and definitely a good fish to start out with. Next, not necessarily a fish here, but something I also keep and sell on the website. Check it out, aquariumadventures.co.uk. Um, it's cherry shrimp. Um, cherry shrimp, these are fascinating things. Um, the reason I'm picking them is because you really don't need a big tank for to keep cherry shrimp. Technically not a fish, so okay, give me a little bit of leeway here. Um, but you can keep a bunch of them in quite a small tank. I've found that, well certainly around here, all you need to do to be able to breed them is to have water and cherry shrimp. Um, other than that, they're really cool to look at, little miniature lobsters. Um, whenever my kids or my kids' friends have been around there, that's the one thing that's made them kind of go, whoa, look at that, that's wicked. So cherry shrimp, definitely on there. Now another one I started keeping was the zebra danios. The reason why I'm treating specifically zebra danios is because all these fish are from my experience. I'm not sure about Graham, but um, yeah, so zebra danios are really cool. They're basically a small danio that gets to four to five centimeters, great for 10 gallon aquariums and bigger. They are, in appearance, they will have blue and white stripes going across them. You can also get the golden zebra danios where they're basically gold and white. So instead of the blue stripes, you'll find the gold stripes. There's also long fin varieties and they look much more cooler if in my opinion of course you might want to get the normal strand of zebra danios but uh the one I i'm currently keeping is a long fin zebra danio and their fins are just amazing and i definitely recommend those fish for you they can live all the way down to about 15 degrees celsius and up to 28 degrees celsius so yeah they are a bit of a cold water fish and tropical fish but i wouldn't keep them outside in temperate areas only in tropical regions because unless you have a heater in your pond or outside tank or whatever you're putting them in so yeah definitely a great starting fish too I couldn't have a top 10 beginner fish list without mentioning my white cloud mountain minnows, one of my favourite fish. Uh, I'm fairly new to these, I mean a lot of people say to me that they used to keep these in the olden days or back in the day when they kept minnows. Um, I've only recently in the last couple of years started keeping these and I just think they're fantastic. They're so active, um, they, you don't need a heater to keep them, they can live in a fairly small tank, I mean that's only a two foot tank in there and I've got a bunch in there and they're always whizzing around. They definitely keep um, the interest, the, the, the something in there for everyone. Um, a very active fish, uh, very, very tolerant of temperatures, so when this room gets really, really hot, absolutely fine with it. When it gets really, really cold, also absolutely fine with it. Now here's another bulletproof fish that's a bottom dweller and will bring lots of action to your aquarium, are the bristlenose plecos, also known as a bristlenose catfish. They are gorgeous little plecos, they're one of those smaller plecos that um, grow to about 10 centimeters, so you will need a minimum tank size of 20 gallons, although you you probably want a bigger tank and because they do like to be in groups so I've seen I, I've only really kept one bristlenose pleco before so I might get more in the future if I have a big enough tank for them I only have one at the moment but they will go a lot better in groups as I've been told so definitely try them out in groups and if you and in case you do get a huge group I'll also add in a few caves for them to breed in in case you get a mixture of male and females that pair off. So yeah, make sure to think about that too before you get them because you might see a lot of eggs in your aquarium and lots of babies swimming around. That'll be super cool. And they're not that hard to breed, of course. They do get a bit territorial though when eating. They do like their own privacy, of course. So you do need to make sure when feeding them in a community aquarium that you spread the food around and also in species only aquariums so that the other male, so that the other plecos won't um, kill each other, <laughs> I guess. Probably my favorite fish and one of the ones that gets everybody into breeding usually is uh, it's a live bearer. So I'm gonna pick the mutt guppy. Um, I, I say mutt guppy, I think that's a, a phrase that I picked up off Michael from Michael's Fish Room. It's a term for when it's not really any particular strain of guppy, it's just a guppy. Um, I've kept them over the years. I think about five or six years ago I got given some guppies by an old neighbour and I've still got them in the fish room now, the, the offspring from them, so they just keep going forever. They're another one that you just need the fish and some water and you've got yourself a little breeding programme. But the colours that you can get from the mutts especially um, you just never know what you're going to get and as they grow and get bigger sure you get some plain ones but you also get some really colourful ones with some really big tails um, and I think it's a really interesting way to get into the breeding side of things because you can work out what line breeding is and do a little bit of research yourself and get some really colourful fish. Now my fifth and final one would have to be the dwarf grammies. You can't make a list of beginner fish without the dwarf grammies. They are one of the most cutest fish ever. I mean, I, oh sorry, I love them. They've got that 
awesome coloration on them. I kept them for a few months. I've never really after that. I don't know why. Probably will in the future. But there's nothing wrong with them and they are quite easy to keep. Some people have a bit of difficulty with them but just as long as you get it all right. You have the pH for, of 7.0 to 8.0 and you need minimum tank size of 10 gallons. Uh, some people keep them in 5 gallons and I'm not a really big fan of keeping um, fish that big in the small tanks. They may seem really short but they also have that odd shaped body and yeah that can make them a bit bigger than they would normally be if they were like a long long fish if you if you know what I mean. So yeah um, they look great in planted aquariums of course and the males will be the colorful ones and the females you rarely see at the pet stores because they are just basically dull. They are the most boring fish I've ever seen but if you do want to breed them like I do in the future uh, then you do need a if you ever see a female in store you always get it because they're very rare or at least in my area they're rare and if uh, you want to take the chance because it might be once in a lifetime opportunity to go breed those dwarf grammies so yeah the beautiful fish they'll probably cost a lot I mean they'll probably um, get you a lot of high amount of money for selling them to pet stores and breeding them for profit. You'll get a lot of profit out of them, so that's a great thing about them too if you want to start breeding them. But yeah, I these are my five favorite aquarium fish for beginners, and if you are starting on the fish keeping hobby, do think of getting any of these fish because they're all great and they're all beautiful and really interesting. I'm going to finish off with the better fish or the Siamese fighting fish as it's otherwise known. Really this is just a good beginner fish because you don't really need a big massive tank so if you're just starting out it's, it's quite inexpensive to get going. They're fairly cheap as fish go but also amazingly stunning so you get some brilliant patterns, you get some brilliant varieties, you've got your crown tails, your veil tails, your dumbo ears, your, the big flowing fins, vibrant colours, but also massive personalities and tiny little fish. They are a bit murderous, so quite often you can only keep them on their own, but yeah, if you're keeping them inside, you generally you don't need a heater as long as you're going to keep the room warm enough. Um, and like I say, you get a small fish, a small tank, bags of personality, it's a great introduction into the hobby. So there you go, thank you very much to Lazarus for giving us that, I think we'll all agree you kind of wiped the floor with me there in terms of presentation style as well as knowledge. Um, I think it's really great that we've got these youngsters coming through in the hobby, so all the best Lazarus, I hope your YouTube career goes from strength to strength. Uh, I will leave a link down in the description, so I hope everyone will go and check out his channel and give him a subscribe, give him a like, uh, give him some encouragement. Thank you very much everyone for watching, uh, I wouldn't mind a subscribe either if you're giving them out, it doesn't cost anyone anything, um, I'll leave the last word to Lazarus and I'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks for having me Graham. this was awesome, I loved talking about fish uh, in this video, it was all great and it's all important chat, you know we need to give those beginners out there a little idea on what they should get for their aquarium fish and your five list, your five favourite be beginner fish were definitely a really cool choice too. So thank you for watching everyone. Lazarus out.